Welcome to the Wolfpack. For more information and ways you can get involved, please visit our website. Okay, so you can watch me um, paint this painting. If you're watching on audio, I, am, I have a painting on in the video version. And yeah, I have this painting that I had started a very long time ago, and I'm going to use these next three podcasts as motivation to really try to finish this painting so it's not just you know sitting there unfinished for you know even longer time so while i'm painting this um let's study james chapter three now this is probably one of my favorite chapters um well actually this is my favorite chapter of james and probably one of my favorite chapters in the bible um one because i just love the teaching it's it's a really um the teaching is very clear i just really like what's actually being taught but I also like the visuals, and what I mean by that is the way it describes things, it sort of paints a picture kind of in your mind um, of some of these things. So yeah, this is one of my favorite chapters. So we're going to start with the first section, which is called Controlling the Tongue. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you, you know, follow along if you want to, this is not a, you know, super deep study of James, it's just sort of a you know, smaller, a little light study. Hopefully it's encouraging to you all. So this first um, section, it's verses 1 through 12 of James chapter 3. And it's basically saying how you can't tame or control your tongue. Um, you, you, you can work on it, but, you know, it, it says right here in verse 8, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Because, and I'm sure everyone knows this, but out of our mouths come can come very bad harmful words and also very good positive uplifting words so and I, I just love the imagery here where it says um, like starting in verse 3 it says we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. So just this visual that the tongue is this small, you know, think about it, your tongue is not that big. But what it does, how much of it, it, it controls, how much it affects. Very important to remember, especially, you know, in, in relationships, really be mindful of what you say. That's really what this passage is about. It's about the power of the tongue, the power of what we say. So I like the visuals here because it, again, it like paints a picture. So you think about a horse with a bit in its mouth and the horse is a big animal, but this bit, this small bit is leading, is directing the horse and the rudder on a ship. Um, again, a huge, you know, a, a ship is huge. Some of these ships are very big, but the rudders, it's, you know, compared to the size of the ship, the rudder is relatively small, but yet how it, it, it guides and leads the ship and then this is one of my favorites um it's actually continuing from verse 5 to verse um and then verse 6 it says but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire and the tongue is a flame of fire it is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body it can set your whole life on fire for it for it is set on fire by hell itself and again this is just an example that when you don't watch what you say how like so think about it if you were to insult someone if you were to you know use your words poorly if you were to you know use your tongue poorly and say awful things and not think about what you say don't have a filter it might seem like a little spark oh i just said this little thing but it can cause a whole it can cause a great forest to get on fire it can set a whole a great forest on fire because our words have such an impact and I think that's just so, just please bear that in mind because it's just, it's very important to remember that because we can often, you know, kind of feel like, well, I didn't mean anything, but I just said this. But remembering how much of an impact our words have, um, they might seem trivial to us, but they can have a huge impact on others. It can really help us to really think before we speak. And then verses um, 7 to 9, it says, People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And think about this. One hand, you can be telling 
you know, your friend, oh, you know, wow, great job. Hey, I'm really proud of you. And then the next minute you get into a fight and you, you know, you call them an idiot or something. Um, so it's again showing how out of the same mouth, from, from the same tongue, we can both lift someone up and tear them down. We can, you know, discourage them, you know, um, we can encourage them. Um, so really be mindful of what you say. That's really what these verses are. It's really about the tongue and really, you know, being just so mindful of, you know, what's, what you're allowing to come out of your mouth. Now, the second part is actually titled in, in the Bible I'm using, it's titled, True Wisdom Comes from God. And this is verses 13 to 18. So the rest of chapter 3 in James, it's a fairly short chapter. And I love this one because it kind of, it ties back to what we talked about in James chapter 2, Faith Without Good Deeds is Dead, about how your good deeds don't save you, but they're evidence that you are saved. Because look at this, verse 13, the very beginning of this section, it says, if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. So think about this. If you really are wise, if you really do understand God's ways, what God wants, how do you, okay, yeah, you can say that you do, but how do you prove it? You prove it by living an honorable life, doing good work with the humility that comes from wisdom. So it's not a so just like what I was saying like in um, about chapter 2, it's not enough to just say, oh yeah, I believe. Oh yeah, I believe this. You have to, you have to show that you believe. You have to live it out. So if you're going to call yourself a follower of Christ, you can't just call yourself a follower of Christ. You have to live it out. And remember, not, not because you're you know, doing good work saves you, but because the, the, it shows you that, hey, I'm not only believing this, I'm living this. You know, this is the evidence that I'm, that I'm actually, you know, believe this, that I actually am saved, that I actually am in Christ, is that I'm actually living this out. And again, from um, verse 14 to 16, it says, If you are bitterly jealous and there's selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. So this is this is pretty clear. Basically, if you're jealous, if you're selfish, if you're you know, think, going after things because you know selfish ambition in your heart because you know, um, because it's what you want, that's not from God, and you need to you know repent. You need to get rid of that. That is not good. So these last two verses in James are. I just want you to really think about these. I'm going to read them. It's verses 17 and 18. It says, But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So I just want to ask you a couple of questions. First is, whether you believe in, in the Bible or not, like regardless of your worldview, would you like to see people who are, would you like to, you know, just see this more often in the world? More people who are peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others, full of mercy and good deeds, not showing favoritism, always being sincere, being peacemakers, planting seeds of peace, reaping a harvest of righteousness. Wouldn't you like to be that yourself? Well, I think most of us would like would like to be that. But pay attention to um, verse, the beginning of verse 17. But the wisdom from above. So this is talking about from God. Now, again, regardless of your worldview, we don't see a lot of what's described in these two verses in the world. And if we're honest, we struggle to be this way ourselves. It's, it's always like we're fighting against something. There's something, for some reason, we're always pulled against this, and it's hard to do these things. Why do you think that is? Do you think humans are capable of being this way majority of the time, if not all the time? on our own? Or do you think we need outside help? Do you think we need the wisdom from above? Do you think we need an outside source like God to help us be this way? Just something to think about. And I hope that, I hope you'll think about it. And I hope that it's encouraging and helpful to you. And you know, even with God, we are all still growing and learning. And this is a process. And we just got to remember that. <laughs>
Thank you for joining us today. For more information on the Wolfpack and how you can get involved, please visit our website. And we'll see you next time.